two, one. Well, it might be football season, but the Cavs season just around the corner. We got plenty to talk about. A familiar face coming back to Cleveland. Also, the Donovan Mitchell storylines have already begun. All that and more on the latest episode of the Cavs Insider Podcast. Well, welcome in to another episode of the Cavs Insider Podcast. As promised, doing these bi-weekly for now. We are we back on ready schedule. For, <laughs> yeah, back on schedule, exactly. As we get you ready for the, the start of the season, which, as I mentioned in the intro there, I, it's really just around the corner. It is kind of crazy yeah. to think about that we're only a couple weeks out. We got media day coming up on October 2nd, so a little less than two weeks till till media day, which is obviously exciting. We will be there covering that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then after that, preseason gets rolling, and then we'll be talking about meaningful Cavs basketball again here in the near future. So excited to be back with you. Tommy, as we get closer to the season, we're actually starting to have some stories and some things to talk about, which I'm excited to dive into with you today. (laughs) Finally, yeah. I know I feel like we've went through this whole, like, kind of, lull of like news and like there's not much going on but like you said tra- uh media days in just a couple of weeks and then quickly after that training camp and preseason it's gonna be here before we know it so exciting stuff exciting yeah, stuff no doubt and apparently I, i'm just noticing this but looks like i'm growing like an afro over here like the way my <laughs> hair looks tonight not my uh, not my not my greatest style my greatest <laughs> hairstyle but hey we'll, we'll we'll roll with the punches yeah um looking like uh jared allen over here with the afro <laughs> Um, I, I think the, I think the obvious place to start Tommy, um, some, some news that kind of came, I don't know. Should we, can we even call it news? That, yeah, I don't that, know. That, that, that's the title of the episode because I, at, at this point we know this entire season, we're just going to be bombarded with, and mm-hmm. obviously we'll talk about it on the show and we'll do stories on it over at CavsInsider.com, but like. There's going to be story after story after story about Donovan Mitchell's future. And yeah. Is he going to resign? And what's his decision going to be? And are the Knicks where he wants to be? And and all these different things. And I I think like, yeah, I get that we're going to get those stories, and I get that we have to report on it. And Brian Windhorst, the latest to kind of have this, right. he actually's right. been on it from the beginning. But he had the story this week, or really on Thursday, where he he basically flat out said, you know. I don't expect Donovan Mitchell to sign an extension this next summer. He's got two years left on his deal, um, and that he's going to sort of play that, you know, player empowerment. I kind of right. control my own destiny here. Card. I, I'm just like I'm not surprised by that anymore. I think at this point, no. I think Cavs understand going into the season. There's a lot at stake if they're trying to convince him to stay, and I think that they just kind of know, okay, um, we're going to have to deal with this, but. It's 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 they know at this point. So I, it's news, but I'm not like sitting here like, oh, this is the biggest story. Yeah, it's it's news, but it's not news. Right, and I think that the the reason that the Thursday kind of headline made made its way around like Twitter and X and stuff was the reason that you know it's Brian Winhorst. Brian Winhorst is reporting yeah. on it. Brian Winhorst is saying that you know he doesn't think that um, Donovan Mitchell is going to sign with the Cavs next summer. So I think especially because he's the one saying it, that really kind of sparked something new. Um, but I think you also have to look at the context too because Windhorst did kind of go on and say that he doesn't – I know the one tweet that we everyone kind of picked up on was one of those big like in, um, NBA news yeah, um, yeah. accounts, which, you know, that's great and everything. But Windhorst, he, he did go on and say that he doesn't think it's going to cause any like – disruptions or like any sort of like unsettled I think, I think he, yeah within the, cl- within the team I think and he it, said it was it, it I don't know if he said expected but I think he kind of right. said like it's it's kind of known that that's kind of the situation like the team isn't right. gonna panic or something because of that yeah and it, I mean I think it all has to do with that like supermax contract and what he's eligible for and if he signs an extension early he would be leaving x on the table if he you know gets x you know like in terms of um all NBA teams and stuff so I guess right now we all kind of saw this coming, 
Um, and at the end of the day, he has two more years left on his deal. He's going to be here, I think, all through next season. And the Cavs still have the opportunity to, to prove to Donovan Mitchell that they are a Eastern Conference contender and hopefully a finals contender as well. So I know we're going to be sitting through, we're going to be having podcasts talking about you know, this storyline of Donovan Mitchell's future with the Cavs. And is he going to stay in Cleveland? Is he going to get traded and all that all season? But I don't think it's really going to happen or anything is really going to come out of it um, in the end. So yeah. we'll, we'll keep talking about it, but I don't think anything's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to get any answers on it. Maybe we right. get a, maybe we get a clearer picture next summer. Um, I, do I, don't think, know. I was going to say, I do think it'll be interesting because we all know that he's going to get asked about it at media day. Um, early in October. And and I think it'll be interesting to see how he responds to that because he can very quickly and very easily like shut down any of those rumors or he can kind of play the, well, you know, I'm just kind of keeping my options open or kind of avoid the question. Um, I I can't see him avoiding it. I don't know. I feel like he is a very well-spoken person. Um, So I feel like he will have like, you know, an answer he's thought about, which is great. But I, I do think it'll be interesting to see how he responds to those questions because we all know he's going to get a ton of them. Oh, I mean that that's going to be something. You know, I, I mentioned we're going to be out there covering it for the for the website Cavs Insider, and you, that's going to be something we are you know waiting on every word of what mm-hmm. he's going to say. Fans will be, and certainly a, a, a headline that we'll be putting out there for you guys to share. Just you know what his his answer is. People are going to want to hear that. Yep. Um, and to your point, I think. He has been very measured in the way he has approached the subject and talked about things already. So I'm not expecting it to be some groundbreaking. Like, let me put it this way. Last week, Giannis made the headlines yeah. because he made the comment mm-hmm. about how, you know, if my team isn't winning or if they're not putting us into, you know, I want to win championships, like I'm a right, Milwaukee right. Buck. But if they're not putting me in a position to win championships, then. I don't have to be a Milwaukee Buck. I don't think he's going to say anything like that. No, I don't think so either. I, I think he's going to keep it very close to the vest. I think he's going to just kind of say the right things because that's what he's done the whole time. Right. And that's another reason why I don't really think it's a story at this point. I, now, yeah. listen, we, we might get news throughout the season that's like Donovan Mitchell's camp is leaning towards him trying to test the free agent waters in 2025. And if we get to that point, then I do think that's where we start having real conversations about, okay, maybe he's with the team this whole year. Mm-hmm. But if you know if if we're getting st- reports that even if the Cavs make a deep playoff run, he still might look to sign elsewhere. Yeah. Um, then that's where you start having a real conversation about like, okay, is next summer the time to move on from Donovan Mitchell? Because you're still going to get a good a good trade package for him. And the Cavs oh, they they realize at this point that you can't just let him walk willy nilly, right? Like you can't yeah. walk let him walk walk scot free. Um, so I I think it's kind of an evolving situation. But I don't know that Brian Windhorst dropping on September 21st right. that that you know he's not planning on signing an extension. Like that, I think that's just kind of I, th- I think first Cavs fans are already expecting that because mm-hmm. we're already hearing all this stuff about his his love affair with the Knicks and New York and where he grew <laughs> up and all this different stuff. Right. And so I think a lot of fans have already kind of come to terms with like Donovan Mitchell might not be here long term. But mm-hmm. two, I should just think that's life in the NBA. Like if you have yeah. a superstar on your team. At this point, I think you kind of understand that two to three years. It's that's right. pretty much the life. They're gonna, they're, kinda... they're always gonna flirt with the idea mm-hmm. that they might test free agency because they're gonna put pressure on the organization to keep the team competitive, to pay them, all that different stuff. So I, I think on both fronts, like it's it's kind of just like a known thing. Yeah, and I think that like my my perspective as like a fan of the Cavs, a fan of Donovan Mitchell. I'm just kind of taking it. I'm going to try to block out as much as I can of all that other noise. And like, he's going to be here this entire year. The Cavs are going to get another shot in the playoffs with him. Let's focus on that. Let's hope that they can make some noise and go deeper in the playoffs. And then, you know, we'll see where the story is at, you know, hopefully yeah. at next June when we're celebrating a Cavs championship parade downtown. Um, and we'll go from there, but I like the sound I don't of that. Know. yeah, he, I, he's going to be here this season. Um, he's yeah. going to be here for one more playoff run at least, and then we can talk about what his future is going to look like. That's yeah. how I'm – right now, that's how I'm taking it. And I'll say this too. Um, like, I don't know – listen, like, I, 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 I just think, yeah, like we can talk about it till we're blue in the face. We're going to talk about it. But I don't mm-hmm. know that we get like a clear-cut answer on anything for a while. And and, and this, this all goes back to, again, I don't want to be, you know, rain on the parade guy. 
Right, but negative. Yeah. The, 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 like, to, like you brought up, you know, you're just going to kind of focus on what's in front of the team and try to sit back and just and follow the team and enjoy the right. season. And I understand that's going to be hard to do for some oh, people yeah. this year when you know, when you already have questions about what the future of Donovan Mitchell looks like. And we know, like, this season's all about one thing, and that yeah. is, listen, when, you got embarrassed in the playoffs last year. Are you going to take that next step? And until we get to the playoffs, there's going to be questions about this team. Like, nobody's going to take regular season wins that seriously because they're going to know, okay, does this really mean anything in the long term in terms mm-hmm. of what, what's going to happen in the playoffs? So, right. I don't know. A lot, of, a lot of questions for this team this year. We talked about that in the last episode, just how much pressure's on them. If they do want to convince Donovan Mitchell to stay. So, yeah, certainly right out of the gate here, media day is going to be a big chance to sort of get mm-hmm. some of those answers and see where his head's at and start painting the picture of what the season's going to look like. Uh, some other questions that will be asked, I'm sure, will <laughs> certainly be about the uh, the Cavs general manager, Kobe Altman. Yeah, who, not a great look. <laughs> yeah, not a great situation for him right now as he was mm-hmm. arrested last week on, uh, obviously, OVI charges. Um, there's been some police body cam footage that was released where it was pretty evident that you know he was clearly – under the influence of some sort of substances and yeah, not, not a great look overall. Um, I don't know. I, I have a hard time with these things sometimes because is that charge like, is it as severe as say, I mean, let's just use another example here in town. Is that as severe and scandalous and disturbing as, uh, what Deshaun Watson or the Browns is accused of? Mm-hmm. no, but on the same hand, it's like it's it is a very serious thing, and we know in this country and really around the world, you know, driving under the influence it takes lives. Like there could yeah, have been a lot absolutely. worse that happened yeah. with Kobe. The biggest thing I'll say, Tommy, is I just whenever these things happen. First of all, it's 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 unfortunate and sad when this happens, no matter who it is. But. Because with with the means that we have today of yeah. transportation, Uber, mm-hmm. um, you know, friends that can come pick you up, yep. taxis yep. if you're still into that type of thing, like <laughs> just given everything that we have at our disposal, you options, options. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate that it happens to anybody, but especially somebody who we know is obviously financially uh, well enough off. Mm-hmm. That they don't that that they shouldn't even have to like worry about those things. Like they shouldn't even have to worry about like driving their own car. And maybe they like driving their car and they want to, but it's like <laughs> in that situation, like you have every reason to not have to worry about like what my bill of an Uber is going to be. Mm-hmm. And you know, so it, so it's unfortunate all around. But that's always my big thing. I always go back to is like nobody should be in that situation, but especially people who can afford not to be in that situation. Yeah. I mean, I kind of look at it as like, he's president of basketball operations for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like you are supposed to be a leader of that entire organization, the players, the front office, like your job is to be a leader Um, as obviously other things as well, but you're the leader. And that's just, you know, that those type of actions, those type of behaviors, like that's, that's not being a leader. And that's kind of like, that's where I kind of settle with it. Like, that's just, it's not smart. I mean, it's, it's, like you said, it's avoidable, and yeah. I don't know. It's it's not being a leader. That's kind of how yeah. I take it. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, and you bring up like his title, like yeah, hell, I don't know. Maybe if you get an Uber, the Uber driver's like, oh, dude, you're Kobe Altman. Like right. you don't even have to pay. Like I don't even like I don't know how that works or whatever. But <laughs> right. you know, like, and maybe I'm just like completely off, off base here. But like, even in some of those situations, it's like you could get a ride from almost anybody. Somebody who would know who you were, and they would just give you a ride because mm-hmm. of who you are. Like yeah. it's it's never an excuse to do that. No matter again, no matter who you are, whether it's you or me or Kobe Altman or whoever, you know Bob from down the street. <laughs> but at the same time, somebody in that position, you know, forward facing person in in a sports organization that obviously is known around town, mm-hmm. it almost feels like you have no reason to even be caught up in that whatsoever. So yeah. it, it's unfortunate. I don't know that there's like some in depth analysis that we need to give here other than what we've kind of said like i don't necessarily think i don't know maybe maybe there's some sports radio show host that they're like is this a big distraction for the team (laughs) call in now i I don't think it's that like i don't think the i don't don't think that the team is going to be 
you know, off to a bad start in the season or anything that happens this season is going to be right. because Kobe Altman got got this got involved yeah. in the situation. But it just obviously is a bad look for the organization overall, especially with the season approaching. Mm-hmm. That you got to kind of deal with this and navigate it. Yeah, yeah, completely agree on all of it. Um, maybe we get into a little more happy and exciting news about a familiar <laughs> well, face being in town, that's, coming that, back to that, Cleveland, not I, leaving Cleveland. That's <laughs> the, that, that was that I was gonna say. This is the perfect segue to be like, well, as we right. move on from a downer subject, let's talk yeah. about something happy. We started off with someone who may be leaving Cleveland. We saw we talked about someone who isn't maybe painting Cleveland in the best picture. Let's talk about someone who. He's come back to Cleveland willingly. This sounds like a teaser for like 60 minutes or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the tick tick song. Yeah. The tick tick noise. Um, yeah, no, I, I I think Tommy did a nice job sort of summing it up there to get us started. But Tristan Thompson, obviously the big news from last week, returning mm-hmm. to the Cavaliers. My theory is they, they only want Tristan Thompson. I shouldn't say only. Because he is, I, to me, he's a Cavs legend. I think yeah, because he was I part agree. of that championship team. 100%. He uh, certainly, he was a guy who was like almost like a heart and soul guy. He was he, the Iron Man for. He had that. He had the longest active consecutive yeah, that's game right. streak. He's yeah, like hundred so like it's a long streak. He, you're 100 percent right about that. But I and that's kind of what I'm alluding to here is like mm-hmm. Tristan Thompson was never the best player on the floor, but he was always like a he was an effort guy like you you knew yeah. you were going to get his his 100 effort you mentioned the iron man the iron man record like he is just and cleveland loves loves those type yeah. of guys so of course oh, absolutely. um but my theory is that the main reason they're bringing him back is because they think they're going to make a deep playoff run and they just needs they know that he has owned al horford so they just <laughs> want somebody who can just Ugh. absolutely own al horford and take him out of that series when they meet okay in, the, in the easter conference finals that's the thing yeah <laughs> i'd be okay with that i mean <laughs> if you look at the roster before the signing like they definitely did need another center um you yeah. had jared allen evan mobley and damian jones and other than that you really didn't have anybody else so i think bringing him in is fine you know he's a like you said he's a veteran cleveland loves him for what he did in 2016 um still got some left in the tank i don't think he's going to be like a big role like i don't think we see him in the rotation every single night but if you can come off the bench and play 10 12 minutes if guys get in foul trouble like there definitely is worse options in the nba to go to so yeah i don't know i think it's just kind of a fun maybe yeah. a little bit of a fan service move but i think that there's some merit behind it and i think i'd rather have tristan thompson on the floor over robin lopez so no offense robin <laughs> lopez uh he's Great player, great player, great guy. But I, I go with Tristan Thompson, double T on this one. <laughs> oh no! I mean, and, and again, no disrespect to to uh, like you said, no disrespect to Robin Williams. I just think Robin the Lopez. Cavs, or Robin Lopez. Sorry, Robin <laughs> Williams. What am I saying? Um, no, <laughs> definitely the wrong R R I P. By the way, yeah. um, no. I, obviously, he wasn't. There was always something lacking. When he mm-hmm. had to come in as kind of like that that backup center role, it was something like they addressed it, but it wasn't like firmed up. It didn't feel like when he was on the floor. So and I don't know that Tristan Thompson like firms it up and get. Here's the thing, Cleveland fans. I know how the rea- how the reactions can be to a move like this. Yeah. They get the it's the nostalgia of it. Yeah. It's that oh he's back. Like this is going to be great for us. And mm-hmm. I understand where that comes from because it's a familiar face. It's a guy you know. It's a champion right. uh, on, yeah. on, on the Cavs championship, from the Cavs championship team. I get all that, but I don't think you know. We we have to remember this is now Tristan Thompson in 2023, right. 2024. Mm-hmm. Last really played significantly for a team in 2021, 2022. So it hasn't. It's been like a year since he's really had like a significant role with the team. Anyway, yeah. I don't like you got to keep in perspective that you're not getting a ton from him anyway, right. but it's, it's nice to have that familiar face. It's a good fan story. You know, it's a fan service type move and hopefully he gives you a little bit more than Robin Lopez was. And you know, he, he can at least contribute in some role when, when needed on this team and his familiarity with Cleveland, knowing what it takes to win that mm-hmm. type of thing. And on some way, and so, on some level, it almost feels like a move where you 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 moved on from Kevin Love this past season, which I'm still a little uh, still a little frustrated by. I I, yeah, I think that comes out sometimes when we're on the show. I agree. Um, but you almost get some of that back with a guy right. like Tristan Thompson, a guy who can kind of speak to like the culture 
and right. winning and, and that type of thing and seeing those days. So uh, from at least even a locker room perspective or, uh, you know, a, a, a team morale perspective, I think he brings something to the table that maybe, it, you know, gives you a little bit of an edge or, or yeah. helps with a younger roster. And I, and I can appreciate that at least. But, again, I don't expect anything huge from Tristan Thompson, which I think is, you know, what you said as well. Yeah. I, I think back to, I think it was 2015, that first year the Cavs were in the finals when LeBron came back. And there was like the promos and everything. And like you had on the one side, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, and Draymond Green. And those were after Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love went down. So on the Cavs side, it was J.R. Smith, LeBron James, and Tristan Thompson. So you know what? He was headlining 2015 finals promo stuff. So, you know, he got that back on the team. So, <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, I will, let me ask you this. Should Tristan Thompson's number be retired as a Cavs great should it be in the rafters Whoa. I've seen this <laughs> I've seen this thrown around a little bit like there's some people who think he should and there's some people who are like I don't think he was on that level like you know save that for Kyrie and LeBron and Kevin Love yeah well I mean but, Kyrie's certainly not because he already has Sexton Wars number and I feel like there's is there someone else who works too as well or well just I don't I don't mean retired yet but I'm saying oh, like okay. down the line yeah, down should the it line. be retired eventually because they, say... they haven't even retired like LeBron's number yet. But... Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I would say no right now. I would say no right now because I think well, that I don't open... think it's going to change much. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, that's like fair. he's not going to do anything now. That's like oh now we don't know. You know, we don't know what's going to happen this year. Maybe he just turns into like I don't know. Just like I, Anthony I Davis think or something. <laughs> my my perspective on it is this. I think we obviously appreciate that championship team, and we want to like you know immortalize as many people from that team as possible. Yeah. But you can't immortalize everybody just because they were on a championship team. Right, Tristan right. Thompson was a great guy. Like I said, I think cultural culture guy. He was he was good for that, and you know just the heart of the team type mentality that he brought was huge. Um, and I can appreciate his effort. I can appreciate that. Like I'll never forget who he was. Right. Uh, you know, he'll be talked about in, in Cavs lore for being mm-hmm. part of those teams. But I don't think I can put his jersey in the rafters. I, I think I think we reserve that for the best, the best. Right. I think it's Kyrie, LeBron, yeah, I think Kyrie, LeBron, and Kevin mm-hmm. Love being the big three probably deserve to go up there. And I think we cut it off at that. Because yeah, then what I are mean, we going to do? We're going to put like Channing Fry up there because like oh, if you, if you if you put uh, Tristan Thompson's number up there, then you got to put definitely Jared Smith, probably Richard Jefferson. Channing Fry's right behind right behind yeah, him. Like, like, like where does it stop? Where yeah. does it stop? Like J.R. Yeah. Smith would probably be the next guy, which along with Tristan Thompson, it's like are we putting him put, up there. I would can we just can we just get a Thompson's honestly? If we put J.R. Smith up there, can we just make it a poster of him with that look he had in the in the his that last finals run together where he's just like <laughs> yeah that LeBron's looking at him like this moralized. and he's like completely yeah. <laughs> oh, man. oh man last question on Tristan and then we'll get out of here. Is Cleveland going to be back on on uh, keeping up with the Kardashians now? Oh no, you're asking the wrong That's, person. That to personally, I'm not keeping up with keeping up with the Kardashians. I don't. I don't want. You. I don't hey, watch hey, <laughs> you know how the game works, man. We might have to be doing stories on keeping up with the Kardashians now. We might yes. have to just watch episodes just to get content out of it. But um, I will say, I don't want to have like the Kardashian like mob yeah. come after me necessarily. I'll, I'll put it lightly, so I don't have that happen. Not a big Kardashian family person. So I, I can't really say I followed it. I always, I always just like brushed off those stories about Tristan and the drama with the family. But I mean, I guess if it means good PR for Cleveland, it ends up on the show. Then right. fine, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've covered Guardians games. I've covered Cavs games. I can't say I've covered keeping up with the Kardashians. Well, like, tweeting, writing stories. You know, we might be doing it, Tommy. So get oh, ready. Boy. Add it to oh, your. Uh, you might have to hit. Re- you might have to start hitting record on the. The old, uh, the, I don't know if you have Hulu, uh, YouTube, YouTube TV, TV. You, oh, YouTube yeah. <laughs> TV. You might be hitting record on keeping up with the Kardashians and have to go back mm-hmm. and watch it just so we can get content out of for the website. Man. <laughs> <laughs> get ready. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have. Uh, solid episode. Um, I think at least one more week, one more time of doing sort of the bi weekly episodes here. Um, just because. I'm sort of in a transitional phase right now with my jobs and I have like a really busy week next week. So beyond that, I think we'll start getting back to hopefully doing once a week as we get you ready for the season. As I mentioned, I know I'll be at media day. Uh, I know Brennan Gulick, who obviously does work with us here at the, at the, 
the site will be at Media Day. That's again on October 2nd. So stay tuned for a whole bunch of content coming out that day. And, of course, you can always keep up with all things Cavs over at CavsInsider.com. Any final thoughts, Tommy, before we get out of here? Let's just get it started. Like, I'm just ready for the <laughs> I'm ready ready. For all the news. I'm ready for all the training camp, even if it's the silly stuff. I don't know. I feel like it's been so dry, the NBA news. Like, Damian Lillard get traded already. Like, I don't know. I know it's not Cavs news, but, like, <laughs> he's got to get something going here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, we know the NBA season, once that, once that picks up, Things start getting hot and heavy. You know, NBA Twitter is always a good time. NBA Mm -hmm. social media is a good time. The drama, all of it. So there will be plenty to talk about, plenty to write about over at CavsInsider.com. And we're looking forward to bringing you along for the ride here in 2023-24. Until next time, for Tommy Wilde and myself, appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll be back in a couple weeks here with another episode of the Cavs Insider Podcast. Until then, take care.